Hey, we are back in the kitchen, and I know what some of you guys are saying. When are we going to get back out in the shop? I promise you, we got shop stuff coming up. Uh, but we're going tomorrow night with uh, the family. We're going to go road tripping, uh, going to look at Christmas lights and all that around the country. And uh, just going to have a, a, an all-around good run-around night with the family tomorrow night. So I wanted to make some snacks to take with us. So we're going to make some more of our different uh, kind of holiday treats that we've made before because all of them have already gotten the stuff that we made last time. But we got a couple more recipes we're going to do, just really simple stuff. So this first one is going to be our little pretzel turtles that we do, and they could not be any easier. Normally I get the pretzels that are, come in the little squares to do this. But my store did not have those. But however, they had these kind of holiday shaped pretzels with little Christmas trees and little stars. I didn't use the little bells because they're a little too wide open in the middle. But what you do is you get a bunch of your Rollo candies, kind of a chocolate caramel type thing. And you unwrap them all and you put one on each piece of pretzel. Make sure your oven is preheated to 300 degrees. And once you get all these Rollos on here, You'll put this baking sheet in your preheated oven for four minutes. And what that'll do is it's going to soften those Rolos enough to do our next step. So I'm going to get the rest of these Rolos put on here and we'll get it put in the oven. And then uh, once we pull them out, we'll show you what we do next. All right, we've got all our Rolos in place. And we're going to pop this into the oven. Again, 300 degrees for four minutes. Now all your broken pieces, don't throw those away. You can make a very good like cheesecake crust with these. Use them just like you would uh, graham crackers. Uh, use about the same amount and uh, break them up real good or put them like just pulse them in a food processor really quickly. And then mix about the same amount of sugar and butter in with them. A wonderful, wonderful crust, crust for cheesecake. So I'm popping these in the oven. All right, four minutes has elapsed, and I can tell that it's been plenty of time because you see the Rolos are kind of falling down on their own, like the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting, melting. So what you want to do is get some pecan halves like this, the whole half, and you're going to place it right on top of there and kind of mush it down into that Rolo, just like that. Kind of make sure it's centered. And we're going to do all of these, and I'm not going to bore you with the whole process. I'll come back when I'm all done. All right, we are done. That could not be any easier, right? Super easy. They're beautiful. If you've never had these, the really salty, nutty, caramely, chocolatey explosion, it's super good. So we've left the oven on because we're going to have another recipe going in there, PDQ. And we're going to get that started for you right now. So we're going to be making some Almond Joy, Almond Joy style uh, coconut macaroons. So one kind of standard size package of sweetened coconut and run your fingers through it and break up all the clumps. Because you'll find clumps in it when you pour it in here. And you want all this nice and loose. And then once you do that, we're going to get a 6 ounce bag of sliced almonds. I think you know where we're going to go with this, huh? So I'm going to stir this up. And then we'll come back and show you what's next. Alright, we've got our almonds and our coconut mixed up. We've dumped a whole can of sweetened condensed milk. Make sure you're not confusing it with evaporated milk. This is the sweet version. And then we have these little measuring spoons, a tad, a dash, a pinch, a smidge, and a drop. So we're going to use some almond extract. And if you've ever used it, you know a little bit goes a long way. So we're going to use our dash spoon for that. And we're going to put it in our milk here. The reason you don't want to put it in here is that coconut will soak it up and you'll have one little spot of almond extract. If you mix it in with the liquid, it'll disperse a lot better in the mix. And then we're going to use a whole teaspoon of our homemade uh, vanilla. 
if you haven't ever made your own vanilla extract, uh, I recommend that you do it. And you can get really crafty with it. Uh, Kelly just used uh, straight vodka for the, um, the extracting liquid. But you can get very creative. You can use any alcohol. You can use bourbon. You can use rum. You can use tequila. Whatever you want to use to uh, get really crafty. So we'll put one of these of the almond extract and like I said a teaspoon of that and I'm going to stir that up real well. We may not use this whole can in here. It's going to be kind of by eye. So once this all gets mixed up to where we can make it into little balls, that's all that we're going to use. All right, we took a little chopstick and we mixed that up really well and we tasted it. And uh, in fact, that was the perfect amount of almond extract. If you don't taste enough of it, if you want more, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So we're going to start adding this mixture to this mixture and stir it up. All right, we got all that incorporated and we did use the whole can. So now what we got is two egg whites. And you'll see on a lot of recipes that they will whip these to stiff peaks, but it's unnecessary because as soon as you pour it in here and you mix it it loses all the air anyway so it's just an unnecessary step but we're going to put these two egg whites in here and stir it up really well and that just acts as a binder of sorts uh, you could probably get away with not putting it in there if you're like vegan or something uh, probably not a necessary step but it's just a little insurance so let me get that stirred in so we've got it all made up and we're using a number 30 disher. I have a full set of these. They're color coded and they have the numbers on here. But that's about what a number 30 disher looks like. If you have like a little cookie scooper, might do the same thing. But it's nice having the, the little lever here for it to let go. Uh, take it, smash it up against the side of the bowl so it's nice and tight ball. And then use your fingers on your other hand to rake up anything that's outside the disher up onto the top and that way you get really nice little haystacks here when you put them out and there's not a lot of stuff hanging out from the edges of them but we're going to fill this whole pan up and we'll get them in the oven all right folks we got them all on the cookie sheet that uh, recipe makes that many right there with a number 30 disher how'd i do if you got a little touch of OCD like me, I was trying to help you out. Uh, everything's good in moderation, right? Uh, so we're going to get these into the oven. And it's going to be 325 degrees. We're going to start out at about 15 minutes and we're going to look at them. Because we don't want to burn the bottoms. So as soon as they're golden brown and look beautiful, we take them out. Alright, we got them out of the oven. As Wolfgang Puck would say, look at that. Beautiful. Start to turn golden brown. That's what you want. So we're going to let these cool and we're going to do another step that is just going to knock your socks off. Some people would think we were done, but if you know me at all, you know we're going further. I noticed these turtles using these uh, shaped pretzels look even more like turtles. Looks like they got a head and uh, four legs. And this one here, if you've ever watched those videos where the turtles are born on the beach and they try to get to the water before the predators get them, that one didn't make it. All right, we're all cooled off. We've taken them all to make sure they, we could peel them off of the parchment so I don't have to uh, keep doing that as I'm going. Now, we've got a bag of special dark. Hershey's chocolate and we've melted that and if you don't know how to melt it go back and look at our our Christmas candy making video So let me show you what we're going to do now. This is going to be amazing It's going to be a wow factor of 50 So you take your macaroons here And you dip them in that chocolate like that and then set them on the parchment over here. Get a new piece of parchment. Don't set them on the old stuff. Look at that. Can you imagine how that's going to taste? That's going to be insane. But guess what? If you think we're going to be done after this, you're mistaken. 
we're going to take it even higher. So let me get the rest of these dipped. And then I'll show you how crazy stupid we're going to get next. All right, we've got them all dipped. Now we're going to take the rest of our chocolate and put it in this Ziploc bag. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own little piping bag out of this. They make regular throwaway plastic little piping bags. But why spend the money? If you have zip bags, you can do the very same thing. So we've got all of our excess chocolate in there. Get my scissors. Put it all down in the corner like that. And then we get some of the air out of our bag. And then guess what we're going to do with this? We're going to get crazy. So you want to take just barely, barely the point off of this. Let's do it over this cup so I don't make a mess. And then, look how crazy we're going to get now. Next level, folks, right there. That's just insane. Who does this kind of stuff? You get one of these in your mouth, your tongue is going to beat you to death trying to process this thing. Look how beautiful that is. Let's go a couple other directions till we use all of that chocolate. We can't have any of that going to waste. I love dark chocolate, and if you didn't know, dark chocolate's actually good for you in moderation, like everything else. The darker the chocolate, the better it is for you. And I love dark chocolate. Are we getting too stupid? Should we stop? I don't think we are. We're almost there. I think we're going to get too much if we keep going, if there is such a thing. What do you think of that? Doesn't that look insane? All right, my friends, there's your turtles and macaroons. Almond Joy macaroons. That is going to be a pretty tasty treat for the family tomorrow. I think they're going to enjoy those. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Uh, our channel has just exploded here the last couple weeks. Uh, we're getting like uh, new subscribers, like almost 100 a day. It's getting pretty crazy, but I thank you guys for liking and sharing and subscribing. And if you haven't shared with your like-minded friends yet and they like this kind of stuff, let them know about us. We want to help as many people as we can learn how to do stuff the old way, make some tasty treats along the way. So tomorrow, I have a huge surprise for you tomorrow. You're going to want to tune in tomorrow. Uh, Kelly's going to be home. She's got uh, her weekday off. is on a Friday this week. And we're going to make you the most phenomenal sugar cookie you're ever going to eat in your life. It just melts in your mouth, like disappears. It's an Amish sugar cookie recipe. But we step it up a notch like we always do, and we add a little bit of edible lavender. So lavender sugar cookies tomorrow. You will not want to miss that. They are amazing. Love them. 
So until tomorrow, when you come back and see us, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us on Mark Kelly Farm.